Hello, I'm Vern and thank you for joining me. So, where are we at? I need God in my life. In a very real way. Do you? We have said we need to know God. Through his word, not ink on paper, but with the help of the Holy Spirit who authored the book. We need to know God through creation. And if we will look at nature and the world around us through the eyes of it being created by God, you'll be amazed what you see. Incredible in my experience. We need to know God through other Christians, through fellowship, through their experience and their wisdom. And if we will know him, we will love him. We will experience him. We will enjoy him. Have you ever thought about that? Enjoying God? If we love him, we will enjoy him. We will want him instead of just feeling obligated to him. And if we love him, we will obey God. He will give us guidance. He will warn us in regards to problems ahead. And we will experience a change and real improvement in our life. This, however, is not magic. What is magic? Magic is sleight of hand. It cards up your sleeve or distraction of attention. So go and distract you over here so that there's something different that's happening there that'll make it look like it's magic. Smoke and mirrors, gimmicks and toys. There's actually magic stores where you can go and buy all kinds of gimmicks and, and toys. And this is not magic. What actually can take place in God's children is the supernatural in order to bring us to what God always had planned for us, and that is to be like his son, Jesus. To be in the likeness and the image of God as he made Adam at creation. In fact, it is incredible that it is Christ in us. Many Christians do not get this. The creator of everything in us. The most powerful being. I don't know if you've ever seen on YouTube uh, the animation where they show uh, planet Earth and then they show how big the planet is from the moon and then it's, they show how big it is in the solar system and then in the Milky Way and then it goes on and on. The most powerful being who knows everything about everything. You've ever thought of this, that you take a human being and their knowledge that they have from their experience growing up, from their education, from their work, from their hobbies, the things that they enjoy doing, what they've learned from other people, and you take that knowledge. And you take the knowledge of every single person who ever lived on this planet. God's knowledge is infinitely greater than what that is. So he knows everything about everything, who has everything in his control. Sometimes it looks like things are out of control. They're not. And then has a love for human beings. That is what the Word of God says, too great for us to understand fully. That's in Ephesians chapter 3. And then it goes on and on and on. And he lives in me. Incredible. So what's going on, Vern? You might ask. Why can I not see this in you? You are so ordinary, Vern. That's a great question. Thank you for asking it. In order for this incredible fact to manifest in us, we must understand that this is a way of life. It is not an event. What we're describing is a way of life. Magic is an event. Christ in you involves us growing and maturing for the rest of our life. It's like marriage. The wedding 
is an event, just as salvation is an event. Both salvation and marriage is a time of making a commitment. The marriage is a new way of life for the rest of your life. Changes will be taking place in your life in a marriage on an ongoing basis. Believe me. The same thing is happening or should be happening in our new relationship or marriage with Jesus. God is never in a hurry. But with Jesus as our groom, if you will spend focused time in your day with him, as you should in a marriage, you will see wonderful, positive reasons to celebrate changes taking place in your life. If you are just looking for a wedding with little or no commitment, your marriage likely will not last. This is how W.A. Tozer put it. He was a man who pastored for years with the Christian and Missionary Alliance, was editor of a magazine, and wrote numerous books. And this is what he said. In my creature impatience, I am often caused to wish that there were some way to bring modern Christians into a deeper spiritual life painlessly by short, easy lessons. But such wishes are vain. No shortcuts exist. God is not bowed to our nervous haste nor embraced the methods of our technological age. It is well that we accept the hard truth now. The man who would know God must give him time. He must count no time wasted which is spent in the cultivation of his acquaintance. He must give himself to meditation and prayer hours on end. This means an ongoing, continuous commitment. This is not an event. It is an incredible, ongoing life. So, what do you want in your life? Are you satisfied with how things are going? If you will enter into this relationship with Jesus, this ongoing, growing, knowing relationship, I can promise you that you will not be disappointed. Thank you for watching. Think with me. I'm Vern.